What is up, guys? You know what night it is. Wednesday night, off-centered with Dustin, the artist formerly known as the personal finance dad, currently going by sports card dad. And he is, I, where, in, where in the world is Dustin? <laughs> yeah. what, what, what are you in right now? I was actually kind of worried that I wasn't going to make this because we were traveling all day coming from North Carolina to, to Northern Michigan. And yeah, we are, we're posted up. I'm worried that I wasn't going to make this. Oh no. We're Hold on a second. All day what a North rookie. What there's a, a, rookie. There's a, there's a, oh God, yeah, where's it coming from? <laughs> the viewership just <laughs> dropped in half. <laughs> Don't worry. Jeff will be on in a second. We have to do a little <laughs> yeah. warm up. All right. I think I, I think I got it. Okay. I've got my laptop going. Yeah, guys, I just literally got to Michigan like 30 minutes ago, and I've been trying to get all the tech set up, and obviously not not quite ready. So here we are. But, um, but yeah, so we're in northern Michigan. My wife and I are out in the RV that's on, I don't know, about 70 acres or so. The kids are all at the main house. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a party. It's a party this week. I was going to say, you know, it would be interesting is if next time you do the live stream while driving down the highway. <laughs> yeah. Well, every time, maybe now that's how we shake it up a little bit to where it's just it's a random place from here on out. So we're going to have Jeff on in a second. And Jeff is uh, in the house that he's running here in Los Angeles. And maybe we'll do like a, a battle of the tours <laughs> between Dustin and Jeff, because I'm automatically out. But between you two, <laughs> it'd be a pretty cool, like, uh, what's that show? MTV Cribs type of battle right there. Instead of a pack battle, we'll do a yeah. crib battle. Good to see you, Steven. That would be cool. Brian, be cool. Uh, What's up, Brian? Okay. You know, so this isn't hinge date specific, oh, but I will say, point. what are you doing, Dustin? I'm trying to fix this. Oh, okay, keep going. Keep volume. talking. So I will say this. I've had a couple dates last week, which is cool. We might discuss that later if it comes up. But one thing I will say, I bought this new water bottle with a fruit infuser in it because I like, you know, watermelon flavored water and lemon flavored water versus regular water. And I've gotten more conversations and you know just random compliments from mostly women than anything else so now this right here with this little fruit infuser 15 dollars, everyone's like oh my god where'd you get that i love that da, da, da. great way to just start conversations at whatever the, the gym the cafe library the park wherever you go so fyi if you're an introvert or uh, you just want to talk to more people <laughs> and you want them to approach you get one of these fruit infusers is well. it re is it real fruit or is that fake fruit at the bottom where you're just trying to look cool or it's like it's yeah just, oh it's, so so it's it's the plastic <laughs> fruit that you uh, put <laughs> yeah. on the dining room table i just wanted it to look perfect so that's why it's that's awesome. it. they're like man that fruit banana. hasn't changed it, last week the fruit looked exactly the same right, next yeah. time i'm just gonna put a whole banana in there <laughs> oh you don't drink <laughs> banana water oh it's the best <laughs> all right so we got the viewership up that's great um mostly because people are waiting for Jeff. Great to see you, AJ. Great to see you, Philly Joe. Hopefully I'll see you Friday morning. Colorado sports dude. Awesome lineup tonight. Who buys the best item while live? Uh, yeah, I think that'll be Jeff. If, if, oh, okay. Well, maybe someone in the comments section, but definitely not me. Good to see you, Ziggy. Michael Stone in the house. Uh, you know what? The thing is, I don't think we should talk you into changing names because your name is perfect now. And but what's kind of ironic is now we're talking a lot more about big picture finance stuff. Like I was always kind of wrapping that in. And now it's like eh, there actually is kind of a recession. There's actually things going on that, that kind of tie all in. So I'm still doing the same stuff. But yeah, different name. And, you know, what's interesting about that, you know, because we'll talk to Jeff a bit about recession or just what he's seeing in, in at card shows and what he's hearing because he's everywhere however i'm not really afraid of a recession because i feel like if you were in the hobby prior to march 2021 you know what a recession is like the hobby went through the recession so now it's just like the rest of the world catching up to what we experienced a, a year ago year and a half ago yeah it's kind of tough though because southern cal is not exactly affected much by the recession <laughs> like where you guys are located not exactly affected the same way as a lot of the country but yeah yeah no i i hear you Absolutely. All right. Well, let's bring him on. Jeff Wilson. What's up, man? Hey, guys. Hey, Brad. Hey, Dustin. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. For sure. And guys, if you hear an echo, it's because Jeff is in <laughs> the largest of the 14 bedrooms of the house that he's <laughs> staying in. And it's just the ceilings are about 22 feet tall. So there's bound to be an echo at some point. 
It's uh, it's a wild house. I got a, a summer house uh, here in Bel Air, summer rental, and um, it's pretty cool. I, 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 it may not be as cool as what Dustin's got back there. I mean, Dustin can Dustin just, can just different, just different. Pop so. up and go, but this is the <laughs> I'm I'm in I'm in the office room here, um, but this is the I'll show you the little pool area outside of the let's office. See, yeah, let's see, see if we keep our internet going view. here. But we've got okay. the. We've got the uh, beautiful uh, grotto pool here. Uh, that's you a, ten a that's that tennis show. court. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Seeing that's a full size tennis court that's hanging over. Oh, we got it. We got we got one of my friends over playing tennis. So yeah, it's um, it's 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 quite the the house here is quite the spectacle. It's like a is, giant. Is that Steve? Is that uh, Steve Aoki out there playing tennis? Yeah, that's Steve Aoki <laughs> playing tennis on the tennis court. So this is a this is a Steve Aoki style house. So I'm 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 honored to be uh, just. Renting it for five weeks. Uh, it's not a uh, not part of, not something I own, but it's uh, not a bad place to be. That's for sure. As inappropriate as this may sound, I can only imagine the amount of hookers that have walked in and out of that house from uh, all the prior <laughs> rentals and the Hollywood parties uh, over the last uh, ten years. All I'm thinking of is uh, straight out of Compton, the movie, and like one of those beautiful big homes that gets gets you know rented out and has <laughs> epic parties. So uh, whoever was there it, it, before you, yeah. It's definitely a party house. The bar, uh, the bar, which is a ways away from where I'm currently sitting, but it is it is uh, pretty spectacular, and you can tell. It's also got a little wear and tear. You can tell that there were some serious all nighters that have taken place in this house over time. Do you know if a celebrity used to own the house? Because a lot of celebrity, times, a celebrity did used to own the house. So there is a so uh, in the bottom of the pool. Uh, there the is a, <laughs> <That hooker. laughs> there's a mosaic. Um, and that when we, when we first, the day we got to the house, I didn't realize a celebrity, it, it, a celebrity owned the house, but the day we got to the house, um, I'm walking around and I look at the pool outside and I look down at the bottom of the pool. I'm like, what's at the bottom of the pool? There's like a big mosaic and tiles at the bottom of the pool. And, um, I can't quite figure out what it is. And so I kind of walk around the pool in a circle and I'm like, I think it looks like a pair of boxing gloves. Mm. And I'm like, huh, that's odd. So I start doing a little bit of, you know, Google research and that type of thing and discover that it is uh, Oscar De La Hoya's house, the famous prize fighter. Uh, nice. Lives, he uh, has uh, built, he built the house. He was the uh, design, you know, kind of designed the house and had a custom built for himself <clears throat> back in 1997. Um, and, uh, this has been, this, this was his pad up until two years ago, uh, and he moved to another location and now it's, uh, being rented, but it's, um, it's a pretty sweet house. Um, it's been a lot of fun and then discovered that, uh, our next door neighbor is Chelsea Handler and bumped into her the other morning. Uh, she was walking her dog. So it's, you know, it's kind of, it's, I'm, it's the LA lifestyle, Brad. It's, it's, you know, it's, uh, what Brad's been trying to show me out here. Like you, you, Never know who you're going to bump into or, or uh, what, what things might be like. And, and the fact that a boxer used to own the house only confirms everything I suspected about uh, <laughs> the illegal activities and shady things that went on that would make a great movie like The Dirt or Straight Outta Compton, but uh, it is not family friendly whatsoever. So the, uh, I, I, I was t I've been told that... Um, the house is infamous. So the Playboy Mansion is pretty close by. The Playboy Mansion's down the street. And what, and what I was told was that this was the after party location for the parties after the Playboy Mansion parties would end. Wow. So your, your kids are like, Dad, look what I found. You're like, oh my God, what is that? Get that out of here. Can, can I play doctor with this syringe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be fair, you could find that anywhere in Hollywood, not just uh, up in the hills. But so, so, I mean, this is your first taste of really LA life, correct? Yeah, first serious taste. I've been here a couple times as a tourist, but only for only for, you know, short few day stints. So this is I wanted to uh, come here for the summer and uh, live here and like really get to experience it. And, and I wanted to do that uh, largely to also experience the card scene out here because the Los Angeles card scene is well known. A lot of people talk about it. Of course, you know, you hear a lot about Burbank sports cards. 
Um, but I knew there were a ton of other good card shops in the area. Um, and you also hear about the fact that there's like card shows that are happening all the time and trade nights that are happening all the time and that there's a lot of like big name collectors out here. So I was eager to get out here and experience that. And, and also, um, my wife loves traveling for the summer. And so just getting to go to LA and really experience life on the West coast. Um, so yeah, we booked five weeks out here and we are currently, uh, week four of the five. So it's been a fun, been a fun journey. And so what, what are, have been some of your highlights so far? Obviously your days are full. You have your kids here, you got a lot of things, but uh, coming in, you know, I guess four weeks in, what would say, what would you say some of the best moments have been for you so far? Well, first of all, the, the sports card scene out here is definitely everything is cracked up to be. It's very active. And as a sports card nut, um, I really have enjoyed being part of the activity. So uh, Burbank in particular, uh, Burbank Sports Cards, one of the things that impressed me so much about that store is how actively they buy. And, you know, a lot of like most other sports card stores I've been in around the country, they don't, they don't buy super actively. Um, you know, most of, a lot of times if people walk in with cards to sell, the owner's kind of half-hearted about wanting to purchase them, or maybe they'll buy a few things here and there, but they're not like, they're not like doing high volumes of daily purchasing transactions. They're also not, and, and part of the reason for that is they're also not selling singles at that high of a volume either, right? But Burbank does such a volume that they, they have two people full time that, that, that almost all they do is just buy cards all day and from people who walk in the store. So it's amazing sitting there and watching just a stream of people come in all the time with everything from graded singles to old vintage stuff, to stuff they just got pulled out of a break to sealed products that they have. Uh, all kinds of different eras and they're just constantly walking in the store trying to sell it to Burbank. But then, and then Burbank's buying a lot of it. And then Burbank turns around and they fill their showcases with it. And they've got a few showcases in particular that are things that they purchased the day prior. So it's like freshly bought stuff. Um, and so people are constantly going in there every day, seeing what was purchased the day previously and, and trying to work out deals on some of that stuff. So it's a lot of, there's a lot of really great activity there. And then there, you know, there's also some great trade nights. Um, there's great card shows. It seems like something's happening every weekend. So uh, that has been kind of, I'd say, you know, kind of a special treat, like getting to just participate in, in that. Um, another highlight was uh, with you, Brad, when, when uh, I got here, uh, the first week I was here, <laughs> the uh, Oppenheim brothers, who are the um, owners of the Oppenheim uh, agency on the Netflix show Selling Sunset, if uh, those in the audience aren't familiar with Selling Sunset, go ask your spouse or your girlfriend and she'll know what it is. It's a very, it's, the, it's I think, the most popular show on Netflix. Um, and it's, uh, it has like a big you know, women following, uh, for the show. My wife watches it religiously. These guys own the real estate agency that's featured in the show. And they, they also happen to be uh, big card collectors. And Brad ran into these guys, uh, or at least one of the brothers, um, in West Hollywood a number of months ago. And, and Brad mentioned it to me and I was like, Oh, that's so cool. Like my wife watches that show. And, and, uh, I didn't know that they were card collectors and, and, uh, and, and you, you actually got recognized Brad by one of them, which was pretty cool. Um, and so I was excited to have the possibility to meet them. So when I came out here that first week, Brad set up the opportunity for, uh, the three of us, uh, Brett, one of the brothers and Brad and I to meet for, uh, a cup of coffee, which then turned into a meal, which then turned into hanging out at their office, which then turned into going back to Brett's condo and seeing his card collection. Um, and then we were able to do some videos with Brett and his brother, Jason, which you'll see on the sports card investor channel here in the next few weeks. Uh, pretty cool. Um, they, they've got amazing collections. Um, 
And it was, uh, yeah, here you go. There's the photo and, from that day, right? With and, uh, and Graham Stephan was there. And then we got the the treat of uh, running into Graham Stephan, which was completely unexpected as well. I did not know he was connected with those guys, but he used to work for them. Um, and of course, he's a huge finance, personal finance YouTuber, um, does a ton of finance and investing content on YouTube. So that was that was you know 3.8 million YouTube followers, I think. So it was pretty cool to run into him as well that day. Uh, so that was definitely a highlight for sure. You know, I'm actually glad you're here seeing how big the scene is because I feel like I'm pretty isolated here in LA, even though there's a big scene, a lot of people on YouTube, I mean, you know, Dustin's in North Carolina usually, and some of the others are in Tampa and just different areas. So it's very it's really similar nice. here in Raleigh. It's very similar. A lot of huge money house you know all of it it's all it's pretty much the same well i, I was going to ask how is the card scene in the middle of the field in michigan oh it's incredible it's actually it's it's wild it's just people with torches they're showing up they're they're coming up the hill now it's it's going to be a blast yeah no yeah la and, and i talked to brad too. I, I want to come out there brad's brad's been saying you got to come out and visit for a week or something it's just tough like unless you're going to bring all the kids with you for a week it's a long time to leave all the kids so but yeah, I would like to do that too, just to kind of get a feel. Because you see all the YouTube, you see all the Instagram and whatever. But you know, from what you're saying, it seems like it's it's what it's all cracked up to be. It's really cool. Now, the one thing you do have to be prepared for is um, everything in LA is really far apart, and so you want to go hit all these different like meccas of the sports card world. You want to go to Burbank Sports Cards, then you want to go to the Frank and Son Collectible Show, which is a must see when you're out here. That's really cool. Then you want to go to the trade night that happens every night at average Joe's, uh, which is a card shop down in Anaheim. And you want to go to like one of the card shows that's happening every weekend. A lot of them are happening down in Anaheim and, and then you get others. Like there was one this last weekend in long beach. Um, and so, but what you begin to realize is that <laughs> oh, all of these things are like, you know, an hour and a half drive from each other yeah. uh, when you when you count in traffic. So it, it is all here, but you also have to be prepared to spend quite a bit of time in your car and quite a bit of money in gas. Uh, it's at, like being in London or something, you know, every, it takes forever to get anywhere in London the same way or, you know, in Europe, you know, so probably similar. Yeah. What's been the most impressive card or collection you've seen since being in L.A.? Outside of Brad's, of course. <laughs> right. Outside of my <laughs> second year Damian Lillard prison base, PSA Nines. <laughs> the best, the best coasters, the best coffee coasters out there. Hey, Brad, those are parts. coming back. Don't be down on yourself. Those are coming back. Stop. <laughs> look, all, I said this. Look, all I have to do is go to a show, market them as coasters and paperweights, and then people will start buying them. Just gourmet, athletic paperweights. Right. It, it's a bad card, but it's a great coaster. It's a great paperweight. I, I tell you what, people will spend like, you know, I think my wife has bought some like, you know, fancy sets of coasters that were like 60 bucks for four coasters. I mean, look, you could buy four bowl bowl, uh, you know, rookie card, prism base card, PSA nines. And you could probably get those four for maybe maybe combined for like 12 bucks. Um, that's a deal. That's some coasters right there. <laughs> yeah. So what, what have you seen that you've actually really liked and been uh, impressed by? And anything um, out of the ordinary too, maybe something that's like you weren't expecting at all. Not even just like a really expensive card, but something that you were like, whoa, I didn't think I would see that. Yeah. So tons of Kobe, tons of Kobe mm -hmm. um, there, which, you know, I, I obviously shouldn't be a surprise here in LA, but it seems like every sports card shop has to have their Kobe rare autograph card section, like every single one, it seems like, right. And, and uh, like Burbank has like an entire Kobe case of like Kobe autographs. And so that's been cool to see, seen a lot of really interesting Kobe autographs that, you know, and rare flawless number to 10 first year of flawless or, or, you know, Kobe, like early, like late nineties, Kobe inserts that are super hard to find, or, you know, that kind of stuff that just a much wider selection of Kobe stuff than I've seen anywhere else. Um, I've seen, uh, today, actually I was at captain fish cards 
uh kind of sorry not captain fish captain um yeah it's a captain fish it was uh i want to make sure i get the name of the sports card yeah captain fish captain fish with a k captain fish collectibles which which i should have asked them the origin of the name i don't know what the origin of the name is it used but what to be I do a long john silvers a, or something what's that it used to be a long john silvers in that building I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. i'm like i'm getting hungry just listening to you describe the name of the card shop <laughs> It was, the cards it was were okay, a, but the trout were, was amazing. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's maybe it's a Mike Trout reference. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, the it was an amazing card shop. Uh, in fact, I got to post. I'll post photos of Instagram to it right after we uh, end the stream. Um, it was a great card shop, and there they had a the only in existence complete set of 2019 downtown basketball cards all PSA 10, the complete set. There were, I think, 25 downtown cards in 2019. Um, you know, Zion, Ja, several of the rookies, and then several of the stars all had downtown cards. And this guy had built a complete set of those in PSA 10. And it's the only one in the world because there were a few of the cards were pop one in PSA 10. So he had the only one. So as a result, he has the only set in the world. So that was kind of cool to see. He also, in his shop, had a complete PSA 10 set of first edition Pokemon, 1999 Pokemon as well, um, which was, you know, which was pretty cool to see. Um, and so uh, he also had a lot of really, uh, really nice high-end old wax. He had uh, three boxes of 2003 Topps Chrome, uh, LeBron's rookie year. He had 1996 Topps Chrome, Kobe's rookie year. He had a few hobby boxes of 2017 prison football. He had 2018 prison football. He had 2018 prison basketball, several hobby boxes. Um, so, you know, some of the real key, you know, kind of, you know, sought after. He had some 2012 uh, sealed product as well, like 2012 basketball. Um, and so he had 2009 sealed tops, uh, Steph Curry's rookie year. That's a hard, that's a hard box to find. Those weren't printed very often. So that was, that was neat to see as well. So, but, you know, honestly, every shop I've gone into has, has had something unique. And then the other thing that I've seen that's been unique is people walking into the shops with some huge cards. Like I was at um, Average Joe's trade night and some guy walked up to me with Luca's 2018 Prism Mojo number to 25 in PSA 10. <laughs> and I'm like, mm a big card he's like you want to buy it i'm like how much he's like eighty five thousand dollars cash <laughs> like, i'll buy two <laughs> i'm like do you know do you, do you accept american express I, I don't have i'm sorry sir i didn't didn't i have the other this 24, 85 grand cash on me you, you know i have the other 24 already <laughs> i might as well have the 25th one as well <laughs> i did buy i don't have it i don't have it in my room here but i did buy something speaking of really unusual things I'm a bit, I, I love the um, 2012 stained glass cards from Innovation back when they were 2012 and 2013 uh, stained glass. Uh, the basketball cards were actually the stained glass that you could see through. They were, they were acrylic. Um, so they let light shine through, unlike the current, like the mosaic or prism stained, stained glass cards that they make today, I, I find to be crap compared to the ones back in 2012 and 2013, because they were actually on acrylic. They were actually looked like stained glass. Um, and so this guy said, hey, I, I watch your YouTube videos and I know you like these stained glass cards. And I said, I do. And he goes, I have the complete set of 2012 stained glass cards. I'm like, oh, that's impressive. How many were there? A hundred. I didn't realize there were a hundred. I thought, you know, wow. I, I had yeah. the big ones. I had like the LeBron and the Kobe and I had the Giannis from 2013. Um, I thought, I assumed it was kind of like a 20 card or 25 cards. No, it was a hundred cards. Um, and I was like, that's got to be really difficult to put together. And he's like, yeah, it took me a long time because they were short print. They weren't, you know, they're hard to find. But I ended up buying the entire set off of them. Um, so that, that's going to be a cool thing, more of a kind of a PC thing than an investment, but I think it's going to be a really cool thing, uh, to display. I want to get like, a, am going to maybe see it like show your slabs can build like a custom light box 
card display where all the cards can kind of hang on the wall and maybe there's light kind of shining through from behind to really show the stained glass nature of those cards. Um, so I thought that'd be pretty cool. That was a unique thing I found out here too. One question I've got for you kind of on that front, Jeff, and I know you've collected kind of like the, the prism and the select and some of the Panini products from 2012 basketball and on for those, are you kind of just curious? Cause I have some of that stuff too, where I'm just, I want to see what, what that looks like down the road you know, 20 years down the road, are, is, are those long-term holds a lot of that stuff for you just to kind of see where it goes or, or are you just kind of playing it by ear where it's, you know, a couple of years, maybe you get rid of it or whatever. Do you have a game plan with it like that? Or is it, you know, kind of more just going with the flow? So I have some sealed wax from those years, which I will probably hold on to. Although I will tell you, I have a little bit of a concern that if Panini, if Fanatics doesn't acquire Panini, um, and there's a lot of talk that Fanatics is going to acquire Panini. But if Fanatics doesn't acquire Panini, all those brands will eventually, you know, go away, at least in terms of football cards and basketball cards and that kind of thing. So if there's no more Prism in, you know, five years, then is the first year of Prism going to be as relevant? Like people are crazy about 2012 Prism now because it's the first year of Prism, but 20 years from now, if there's no prism, are people going to care? If there's continuously yeah. prism every year for 20 years, then people are going to care. But if there's no, I, I don't, I, I don't know. So I'm a little mixed on that. Does it uh, work the other, could it work the other way though, where maybe people are like, man, they have nostalgia around it. You know, they opened a lot of prism or whatever, 20 years, then you've got people that open that product kind of like, I mean, I know this is not apples to apples, but star Jordans and Fleer Jordans, you know, you've got kind of, you know, different, um, you know, you've got people that, that love that, those star sets, even though they're, you know, it wasn't mass produced the same way that Fleer was. I mean, do you think that, I guess it could go the other way too, right? Where if they stop making that prism down the line, people are like, man, I remember that prism and it was, it was sweet. You know, I mean, that, that's the stuff, like that's the best stuff. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So it could go either way. Um, I'd be curious to hear what people in the comments think about that as well. Um, yeah. Are you, are you, if, if Prism start, stops getting produced, are you more pro like holding old Prism or are you, or do you think old Prism will kind of lose its value? I'd be curious to see what people think. Um, My take would just be, it would take way longer for nostalgic to kick in. It would be 20 years down the road. You see, oh, Prism. Oh, yeah, that took me back to 2020, COVID, and then we were all buying this. But four years later. Well, no, no. I mean, I'm just thinking, though, because it cycles like that, you know, and it will cycle like that, not necessarily for just Prism, for Prism products, but there's going to be a, a time 20, 25, 30 years from now where, like, us as, like, we're getting back into it. The same thing will probably happen again. You know, it'll cycle back around. Not necessarily for Prism products, but the 10-year-olds right now will one day be 40. You know, and then it'll be the same story. Or at Sports least card, Sports Card Anonymous, uh, great YouTube channel, uh, had has a has a comment. He agrees with you guys. Um, you know that that uh, it could actually add value to Prism, make it more sought after if it if it goes away. You know, I guess that nostalgia thing, like you're talking about, Dustin, that could very well be the case. Now, I will say, the other aspect is the players from early Prism what the hell has happened? Like what the hell happened yeah. to the players from 2012 prism? Because there was a moment in time, like two years ago, where that was the most incredible product with Kyrie Irving and Anthony Davis and Kawhi Leonard and Damian Lillard. Are you kidding me? Clay it Thompson. was like the greatest yeah. players in basketball. And what the hell happened to all of them? Like, seriously, you got, you got, um, I, you got, who else you got in there? You got Clay Thompson. Thompson. Of course, he's yeah. back on the rise now. So Clay Thompson's good. You've got Bradley Beal, but he's never escaped Washington. Jimmy, he Jimmy Butler. He five year extension with Washington. Jimmy um, Butler as well, right? What's that? Jimmy Butler. <clears throat> and Jimmy Butler had a, had a great year for the, for the Heat and saw his card prices go back up. So, I mean, You've you got some of the players in there who have still gone on and done well, but like a few years ago, like the best cards in that set were uh, you really had um, you had like Kawhi Leonard, Anthony Davis, and Kyrie Irving were the three. That was like those were the three standouts, and then all of the other guys were kind of secondary to that. 
and talk about three players who have just fallen off the map in the last year uh, compared to where they were from a stature standpoint a couple of years ago. So, um, you know, unfortunately I've got, I've got singles of all those guys, right? I bought 2012 prism rookie cards of all of those guys. And, and, uh, um, you know, I, I, I spoke on my channel at length about how I thought Anthony Davis was a great pickup because he was going to be relevant for the Lakers for a very long time because, uh, I thought that, you know, after they won the championship in the bubble a couple of years ago, I was like, oh, the Lakers are going to go on and win more championships. And eventually LeBron will, you know, retire and that will become Anthony Davis's team. And he'll be the face of the team. And maybe they can win another championship post LeBron and Anthony Davis's stature will be, will go down in, in, you know, LA Lakers history as, a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar type, you know, or something like that, right? Maybe not quite to that extent, but like a, a great player. Like, no, that unfortunately, like I dead wrong on that one. Like that one has that one. And, and there's still time, you know, he can still revive. The Lakers can still revive, but he's fallen. Kyrie's fallen. Kawhi Leonard's simply been out. And hopefully Kawhi Leonard comes back this year with the Clippers and can do something. But that 2012 class, man, it went from looking like the greatest, you know, class of basketball cards ever. And technically that was two rookie years combined into one to now like looking like a bunch of chumps, honestly. Well, you know, the interesting thing with that year too, is when you look at the pop counts and you look at the lack of variety, you'd feel even more confident buying prism base or silvers. Like, well, what else are you going to get of clay Thompson? You got prism or you got silver. I mean, can you really find anything else? And yet even with clay Thompson, I remember, I don't know when it was, but it was before the playoff run. I was able to get out of my Clay Thompson PSA 10s for maybe a hundred dollar profit uh, per 10, you know, and then minus eBay fees, it was probably break even, maybe a little profit. But I was like, wow, thank God. But if you look at the numbers and you're still, well, this guy's attached to Steph Curry. The, the pop is so low. He already has rings. I know injuries are a thing, but this is the time where people go overboard with their emotions and, and buy a player that's going to the, to the finals with a, a superstar and the numbers and all this stuff will just make sense. And it's still crazy to, to look at all of that happen and, and the players and their values just decline in spite of numbers that are just a fraction of what you've seen the last couple of years. So uh, I'm there with you too. Let's shift over to national stuff, Brad. I know we wanted to touch on it. Uh, Jeff, yeah, Brad, Natural Brad, transition. Because Brad, Brad will keep on going down this dark hole of well, Kyle well, Murray. Actually, actually, I don't want to see him question. I don't want to see him go down there down that path okay. too far. So let's mix it up. <laughs> so how about this? One more question. And the only question I want to wrap it up with before we talk about national is what is your stance on the hobby after your trip or so far being in your trip? Has your perspective on the hobby shifted at all after now experiencing the Southern California market? Well, so I would say in general, this, uh, these last couple of months have been a real slow period, the kind of a slowdown period for the hobby, right? I mean, obviously we've seen a decline in prices and market activity ever since, you know, February of last year. Um, the and we we've seen some also little bumps up back along the way. January this year started hot. January this year things uh, went up. They were better than they were like November December of last year. Largely fueled by interest around the football playoffs, Joe Burrow's cards, etc. But then things started to settle back down a, a little bit after the Super Bowl. But these last two months, things have really gotten quite a bit more quiet. Now, I think what's happening there is we're seeing, we're, I think there's a couple factors at play. Um, one of which is we're seeing seasonality in the sports card hobby for the first time in a few years. Because the last couple of years, the hobby was being so either pushing up or falling back that you didn't see as much seasonality come into play. But historically seasonality was common within the sports card hobby. And historically, summers were a slow period for the sports card hobby. Because if you look at the sports calendar, this is kind of a dead zone. I mean, like the NFL is on hiatus, nothing's happening. The NBA is just wrapped up for the year. We're a ways away from the next season starting. Um, you know, you got summer league that just started, but you know, 
no, those players' cards aren't out yet. Um, the NHL just wrapped up, and Major League Baseball is still in the first half of the season. You know, you aren't you aren't close to the you aren't close to division races yet. So, it's kind of a slow period in general. I think you're going to see the market pick back up again in August and September as we get into football season. I think this I think this fall with football season and the quarterbacks, and I think it's going to be a really hot time for the sports card market. You've also got the World Cup in addition to basketball starting back up in October as well. Right now, the, the, there's also, though, the factor of the economy. Do we officially enter a recession? What does that mean? Are people scared about that? That's a big X factor that you know could have some impact. In terms of Southern California, what I've seen here is... It just gives me a lot of optimism for the future. I mean, I, you know, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. I've said repeatedly on the channel that although things have slid back a bit in the hobby over the last year, I'm very optimistic about the long-term growth of the hobby. I'm very optimistic about fanatics. There's a lot of optimism here in South Florida or here in uh, not South Florida, Southern California. And there's a lot of investment that's been taking place. I mean, some of these card shops here are really nice. Um, I've met a number of breakers that are doing great with their breaking businesses. Really, really great stuff. Um, you know, card shops that are doing strong business. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people successfully selling online, a lot of people using whatnot and making a lot of money selling on whatnot or breaking on whatnot. That's been a trend I've definitely seen, but in general, um, there's a strong community here and people are optimistic about the future People, you know, even though the market's down right now, people kind of share the same optimism I do. So, I mean, if anything, I would say it probably gives me, you know, I, I was already optimistic about the future, but it probably gives me continued optimism about the future. And, and I think that the hobby has a real solid foundation. I think there's a great community out here and I think that it will grow and I think it will grow again. And the other thing too, uh, with summer is I know a lot of people here have said, I can finally travel for the first time in two years. A lot of people are taking their vacations that they didn't take last year and, and perhaps the year before during COVID. And maybe that's just a Southern California thing where the, the restrictions were tighter. But I believe a lot of people are getting that out of their system where maybe the travel is even just twice as much as last year. And then with higher gas prices and flights and everything, more money is just going to that same trip. So less money is going to cards and maybe school's back in in a couple of months and we see that resurgence again. Oh, I've told my kids, we're not slowing down on card buying at all. So they need to really kind of, the, the stuff that they want is going to go on the sidelines. It's going to stay on the sidelines. No, no more, <laughs> no toothpaste. We don't have money in the budget for toothpaste. You're Guys, gonna, that's going to go yeah. towards another. Do you need that many refractor. paper towels? Do you need that many paper towels? Just stop okay. spilling. Stop <laughs> spilling, and we won't need the paper towels. You Air conditioning wash... isn't free, guys. Shut the door. <laughs> you don't need to wash your hands anymore. We're through with COVID. It's okay. <laughs> okay, right, Jeff, I'm reading you... reading all the comments and. Uh, the commenters share a little less enthusiasm than I do about the short term of the about you know about the market and the seasonality and everything like that. So I don't know. Like, look, none of us have a crystal ball. None of us can predict exactly what's going to happen. Um, I still feel very good about where the sports card market's going to be once Fanatics really gets involved and starts infusing a lot of marketing dollars into it. I'm optimistic the second half of the year will be good. I, I think there's a lot of hope for these new quarterbacks and and. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm optimistic, but maybe I'll be proven wrong. We'll see what, but I tell you what it's, it is, it is certainly fun. And the community out here has been great from that aspect, like being in an area where you can go to trade nights every single week. If you choose to, you can go to card shows every single week. If you choose to, that's really cool. And you start seeing a lot of the same people at, at them. And, and that's really neat to build friendships through it. I saw a question here, Jeff, to star basketball. What is your thoughts? That's been kind of a hot topic over the last, what, 10 days since now PSA is going to start grading star basketball. Have you, have you already been collecting those? Have you already been buying them? Is it something where you're kind of like, I'm not really interested or any, any kind of thoughts on star basketball stuff? So I did before this trip, I owned no star basketball at all. I don't really like the visual look of the cards 
I really like 86 Fleer. Like 86 Fleer, that set visually to me is like, I just love the look of 86 Fleer. There's something about that set that I really enjoy. Whereas the star cards, I find drab and boring and just, I just don't like the design of them. So the idea that like, I, I've honestly, I've always kind of like been like, I don't even want to see those. Just give me 86 Fleer. That's, that's everybody's rookie card in my mind, not, not the star cards. Um, now, actually, I did pick up as a unique set of star cards while I was out here before the PSA news was even announced. And that was that a guy at uh, one of the card shows out here had a complete set of the 1985 stars uh, Gatorade Slam Dunk contest cards. Those cards are actually bright green borders and they have yeah. photos of like the various players like Michael Jordan dunking. I liked the visual appeal of those cards a little bit more than the red bordered kind of standard star cards. So I picked up that set of the Gatorade ones, but that was the first, those were the first star cards I ever bought. Um, will it have a big impact on the market long-term? I don't know. Maybe I'm kind of hoping not. I, I, I like my 86 Fleer. I, I'm going to stick with my 86 Fleer. So I, I don't really want people to start recognizing like the star Jordan as a true rookie. Cause I, 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 I think of his 86 Fleer that way in my mind. Well, as we head to the end of July, you'll obviously be at the national. What's on your mind now as you enter this national versus uh, last year's? And then also, do you expect the same type of buzz with the state of the market and the state of the economy? Uh, or do you feel like it's going to be slower? Do you think it's going to be different in any way? That's a great call. That's a great question. So I assumed that the national was not going to be as big of an event this year as it was last year because of the fact that the hype in the hobby has died down somewhat. And because of the fact that it was, it's now in Atlantic city, which is a hard city to travel into and is difficult for a lot of the country to get to. So for those reasons, I kind of felt like, eh, maybe it's not really going to have the same degree of buzz. I'm sure it will still be a wonderful event but maybe it would be more akin to like 2019's national rather than 2021's national. But I, I talked to um, Mike, the owner of Jaspie's sports cards in Hermosa beach yesterday, who's been in the hobby for 40 years uh, and has been to, I think he's been to every single national. Um, he's been set up at many, many of them. And he told me that the third best national he ever did maybe actually no maybe i take that back maybe it was his best national it was one of the best nationals he ever did was the was one of the ones in atlantic city and i said really and so he was predicting this was going to be an incredible national and i said i said that okay why, why do you think that and he said because it draws everybody from new york philadelphia you get a lot of the east coast right you get people who can come in for the day um, from the big cities around there, you'll get, you'll get some DC coming up. You'll get Boston coming down. You'll get a lot of those big East coast cities flooding into it, which is huge population center. So he thought it was going to have a ton of traffic and a ton of traction and be really good. So I hope so. We'll see. And the other thing too, is we have a lot of really good shows on the West coast and more and more shows becoming higher quality all over the country. So I, I don't feel like people have the need to go to the national like the way they may have really desired to go a couple of years ago because that was the only quality show because now dallas is like well dallas is it is what it is but that used to be uh, the big show in between nationals and now we have all these different shows and atlanta has the culture collision and we had mint collective different types of shows burbank's having a, a i think a three-day show here where this could be the biggest show in southern california and could be obviously not national level, but just such a high quality local show that maybe they start doing it every quarter or every six months. And all of a sudden, what you see here is enough to say, you know what, I don't think we need to go to the other side of the country. And with flights being what they are, hotels being what they are, when you can find so much uh, you know, in our backyard. So it'll be interesting to see for sure. Uh, Dustin, this is the first time this has ever happened. I got I to gotta pull this up. <laughs> rice bonds 
Montana too young. Whoa. How did <laughs> Dustin's camera suddenly become best in class? Not only become. Yes. Yeah, I just figured out using, so just using my iPhone, I guess, gives me a better picture than my, my Mac. So yeah, I don't have a Canon 8000 or anything that's attached like Brad does. This and let's hope MacBook. to God that the batteries, that, that Brad's got battery on that camera, because it's, uh, it gets it's a little look, shifty look, once, it, that, once it, that camera goes. It is, it, it's just, it's just my computer. That's it. <laughs> but you know, it, you have a very cinematic look right now. So like a very, like, I, I'm actually looking in the back to see if I could see a bear crawl up to yeah it might be the, it might be lighting or something it's kind of dim i don't know it might, it might just be a you know, uh oh uh oh something happened something happened dex flow uh, what I thought, had, I thought this had to do with dustin's <laughs> camera i thought he was dex flow was rewarding me with ten dollars because of <laughs> dustin's high quality visuals which has never happened before so okay. oh and for De hey dex specifically for dex i know it's transformers and then for me masters of the universe but go ahead and answer this okay so toys different collectibles <laughs> adding to market movers what do you think um okay well first of all appreciate dex full his enthusiasm do not agree that the hobby is crashing burning not happening uh we're in a little bit of a slow period 100 percent. yes don't agree that it's crashing and burning but is SEI going to add graded toys to its portfolio, being that AFA, the PSA of toy grading, is loaded, located 20 minutes from the SEI compound? I did not know that. That's Dexflow, Dexflow bringing the information here to me. Um, I, I might have to go uh, see if I can uh, meet the AFA team. That's interesting. Um, the, uh, so the answer is uh, we are absolutely moving in the direction of adding other types of cards and collectibles into market movers and eventually our sports card investor app, or we may have different types of apps, right? We recently have been adding, uh, we, first of all, we added um, close to 20,000 Marvel cards in market movers right now. Um, we recently added Pokemon sealed wax. We'll soon be adding a whole bunch of Pokemon singles. The, obviously the, you know, Pokemon trading card games and everything is low hanging fruit, but then we're looking at comics uh, you know, video games, VHS, other things people collect that are graded. And, and yeah, I guess eventually um, toys as well. I, I, don't, I don't know a whole lot about the toy world. So we would have to um, enlist the helps of experts who do, uh, but it will be, it will be uh, forthcoming. Hey, hey, Dex, real quick, come back 20, get market movers for a dollar <laughs> your first month, and then I'll get permission <laughs> after that. I get, I get like 20 cents of that dollar or something like 30 cents of that dollar. But then once the subscription rolls over, I get more. So FYI. Speaking of, so Jeff, <laughs> actually on that topic, putting you on the spot a little bit, I know that I've heard you talk before market movers when it came out, obviously was kind of gangbusters in the beginning because of just the timing. First, you, you got there with a, with a great product came out um what's kind of your take nowadays I, it's kind of part of this question but not necessarily you know all the way but just kind of like how are things going you know with the market movers tool i know you guys are implementing new things how how are your you know how are you feeling i guess about just the overall stuff yeah so um yeah so as you said we launched market movers in february 2020 we were the first first to market with the data tool anything of its type it was you know the first first product that could do any type of charting of cards or anything like that. Um, and as when the market was hot, we were adding, you know, tons of people to market movers every single month. Our growth was really, really explosive. Obviously with the market cooling off, we're no longer seeing that type of growth, you know, within market movers anymore. So we're looking at, um, and, and it, it, part of it is, is part of it is tied obviously to the heat of the hobby. Um, but we're looking at ways that we can continue to grow and expand market movers to make it more convenient, to make it more useful and to make it, um, to make it something that every investor or collector, uh, would love to have and love to participate in. So, um, I'll break a little bit of news for you guys. This is new information. We haven't, we haven't, uh, uh, disclosed it to anybody yet. And in fact, I knew I, think, I could get it out. I knew I could get it out. We, we, right, we really need credibility for this show. So this <laughs> is huge for us. So, um, there's two big things happening with happening with market movers. The first is that at the national, we will be rolling out with new, with, uh, some different pricing plans. Market movers will start at $9 a month, which is, um, which is one gallon uh, of gas. Here. less than any of <laughs> one gallon of gas less than any of the competitors are charging and is um is uh going to have a really nice uh feature set associated with it 
The other thing is we're working on a brand new version of Market Movers, Market Movers X, which will be launching in August. Um, and we're going to be having a special preview of it at the National. And it is super slick. It is a brand new redesigned version of Market Movers from the ground up. It is really slick. Um, it is, it is, uh, it's real cool. And that is with the launch of that, that is then also starting to, to really pave the pathway for us to start incorporating other types of collectibles into market movers as well, and make it not just a system that can track your sports cards, even though it will still be able to do that the best of anything out there. Um, but also make it a system that can track other forms of collectibles that you may have, whether it be, you know, trading card games or comics or toys or, uh, you know, video games or whatever that might look like now or in the future. So we're going down that path. We're also going down the path of working to expand our card database so that it eventually it includes every card imaginable. And, and all of that data is right within market movers at your fingertips. We've been able to accelerate the rate at which we're adding cards into market movers. We have over 700,000 uh, sports cards we're tracking in market movers now. It's a massive database, um, you know, several magnitudes bigger than other products. So, um, and, and our lead is only going to grow. Uh, we're continuing to, to reinvest in it. So there's a lot of big things happening. So um, you'll, you'll see some really good stuff here from market movers over the next month. Cool. Good stuff. Yeah. And just, uh, just to know that the letter X is the coolest letter to have in any product name. So I would sign up just because of the X, I mean, it's not like <laughs> market movers are, you know, like, Oh, okay. Well it's R, but X is like X men or 10 or whatever. It's X factor, Brad. Come X on. Factor, X factor. Right. Come yeah. on. Something, whatever. X you gotta have the letter help, X. I'll help oh. you get through. I'll help speaking, you get through. speaking of branding, by the way, the last time the three of us were together on a call, Dustin mm -hmm. asked me if he should change the personal finance dad. And I said, I thought he should. And then a couple of weeks later, all of a sudden I'm on Instagram one day and I'm like, who's this, who's this it's sports, who's this DMing sports me. card Wait, dad? Is, is this, is this the notice I'm getting that your, your lawyers are reaching out asking for royalties? No, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I took back. I took a lot of feedback, including your feedback, and and yeah, it was a good move. I think it was a, a smart move. So I appreciate that. So, That's so. awesome. I I'm glad that it's working well for you, Dustin, and congratulations on the uh, on the brand change there. Thank the you. Moral of the story is: if you cyber bully people, <laughs> you put them on the spot in front of hundreds of strangers online, you can make them do whatever you want. So remember, guys: peer pressure, cyber bullying, it works. Okay. <laughs> That Brad, was the tipping point. That was the Brad, tipping point. Brad's mantra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was a question here. Sports Cards Anonymous. We really appreciate the super chat. Jeff, what is the best Tebow card or most sought off after one? I destroyed that. You can read it, though. That's a great <laughs> question. Card or more, most sought after one. There we go. I got a lot of really cool Tebow cards. Um, I have his 2012... Prism football, speaking of, of, you know, Prism, I've got his 2012 Prism football and it is, it would be 2012 or 2013. It's the, um, uh, first year of Prism football and it's his, it's a, um, Prism Prism. So the Prism silver from that year, PSA 10, and that's a pop one. It's the only one out there. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool because it's like the first release of prism. It's, it's, you know, kind of an iconic, you know, prism football. He's, he's with the jets. I wish it was from his Broncos era because I remember him as that, you know, that incredible season he had with the Broncos, but it's still a really cool card. That one's real cool. I've got his um, Bowman firsts baseball 20, what was that 2019, 2018, I think was his Bowman first baseball um, Bowman. Uh, and that was, I've got the red, which is uh, serial number to five uh, card number one of five. So the only card that's better than that one in existence is the super fractor, right? The one of one, which I've not seen pop up, but if anyone has the Tebow 
first Bowman, first, you know, super fractor, let me know. That would be a pretty cool one to, to have as well. Um, and then I've got, you know, I've got some of his RPAs, uh, you know, cool Jersey patches, on card autos, you know, that kind of stuff, which, are, which are, those are cool ones as well. But those are, those are a few that stand out to me in particular. Um, yeah, those are, those are a couple of my favorites. I also have one, I also have from flawless one year. Uh, he had a card where he and Emmett Smith both signed the card together, obviously Florida Gator legends, both really nice on card autos, um, a, you know, a dual signature from flawless. That, that's a cool one. That one was numbered, uh, I think number to five. So uh, those are a few of my favorites. I think this is a good question, Brad. Raleigh AI has a question, and I can't really see the timeline on it. Has Jeff has Jeff thought of changing his intro tagline, profit from the hobby we all love, to reflect more on kind of all the things that SCI does in, in the community, um, in the hobby? You know, I mean, because you're doing a lot of stuff with young people. You know, not that it's a bad, bad tagline at all, but is there, have you thought about that? Because I saw you switch, you've switched that up over time a little bit, the intro. And, and real quick, it's Al. Oh, Raleigh, Raleigh Al. My bad. I'm in Raleigh Al. How have we not had a coffee or a drink or something? Anyway, go Raleigh ahead. AI. No, Raleigh AI. Al, I thought that was a bot. I just thought that was a bot. <laughs> yeah, that picture does not look like a human whatsoever. <laughs> that's a that's a great question. Thank you, Raleigh, for the question. And uh, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, we've been thinking about it. You know, we have. Over the course of time, we have definitely, um, you know, expanded our content uh, and really everything we're trying to do in the hobby well beyond just dollars and cents and and how to flip a card or invest in a card to make profit, right? And and we've gone to, we've done a ton of content, which hopefully everyone has seen and enjoyed around like, you know, profiles of awesome collectors. Um, behind the scenes tours of places like Golden Auctions and Burbank Sports Cards. Both of those tours just came out in the last two weeks on our YouTube channel. And in the past, we've done SGC, you know, behind the scenes and stuff like that. Um, you know, and we're, we're, we're trying to do more content that just really promotes the, what makes the hobby special and unique and really showcases the hobby in a great light. And we're trying to do that not just through our content on YouTube, but also doing that through our content on Instagram, on TikTok, um, and on you know other platforms. Our website, um, we actually put out like totally different and unique content on every single channel, and not everybody follows us on every channel. So people watching may be familiar with what we're doing on YouTube, but you might be surprised that if you go to our website, we have uh, several authors who are really. Um, great, notable, you know, well-researched people in the hobby who write new articles for our website every week. So our website is constantly getting new articles that are, I think, really well-written and, and uh, informative. Um, you know, if you look at our Instagram, there's cool things happening there. If you look at our TikTok, there's totally different things happening there. And we're, we're it's all with the mission of really trying to bring awareness to just how awesome the hobby is in general. Uh, and then, of course, we're doing things like also really trying to highlight kids getting into the hobby and helping kids get into the hobby and doing a lot of one one 101 type content, doing a lot of, you know, card kids giveaways. And of course, my sons have their own YouTube channel called Card Kids as well. Um, that's getting more and more popular every single week. More and more kids are watching that, which is um, really cool to see uh, that kids are kind of watching that and experiencing the hobby alongside my sons. So yeah, it's not, it's, it's not all about profit and it's not all about investing. It's about, it's about the community. It's about the, you know, collecting, it's about how great the hobby is. Right. Um, and so we're, we're really trying to diversify our content in that way. And maybe it's time we change our tagline as well. Have you thought of changing it? Since I know you're a father, have you uh, decided if sports car dad is something that you would like to take over and just crush anyone in, in your path that has that name. All, all, of a sudden that I find out there's, all of a sudden I found out there's a trademark on it. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, I guess I should have trademarked it. Or something. <laughs> like Jeff's got all these patents pending. N new, new video from Dustin. Jeff just served me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we get some views. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be sports card father and then uh, we can coexist. 
sports card dad x <laughs> x factor <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a great question here we're gonna cut it in just a couple minutes but i thought this was um a great one as well from tom because i know you have a personal brand as well but he says jeff when you started was there an idea to put your name in the company's name similar to what beckett has become i got that right i read that correctly i'm actually proud of myself Riley yeah. ai <laughs> no i never i never considered that because i uh, and I've never done that with any of the different companies that I've started over time because I have always wanted the companies to be more than me. And, and although you see me much of the time on the videos and, and the Instagram and everything like that, like, you know, I, I've got a, a team of, ex, of a great team of extremely talented people that work for me that help make all that stuff possible. And so it's really about the collective of all of us working together and I want it to, I want it to be able to, uh, you know, go far beyond just me and, and, uh, you know, have all these other people, like Teapot being one of them. So that's Teapot there in the chat. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's a huge part of the team. We've got many, many great people, um, who work for sports card investors. So, uh, you know, I want to highlight it in that way. And, and, you know, there's nothing wrong, certainly with Dr. Beckett naming the company after himself. Although I will say you know, Beckett lost a bit of its mojo since Dr. Beckett left, you know, it absolutely did. Like Beckett was the absolute leader in the hobby, the leader in data, the leader in pricing, the leader in grading. And Dr. Beckett left and I think the mid 2000s sold the company. And um, it, it, it hasn't been the same ever since. And uh, I know they're trying to revitalize it now and they have a new CEO and everything like that. But I, I would imagine that's got to be a little bit hard for, for Dr. Pe Dr. Beckett to like, you know, it's my company, my name's still on it, but it's not what it quite what it used to be, you know? Absolutely. And uh, I got to give props to everyone in the chat who notices my wiggling around <laughs> because it's been the longest uh, stretch of me not using the restroom. I had two smoothies and like a gallon and a half of water today out of my fancy uh, wherever my bottle is. I don't even know where it's at. But uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll cut this in a second. But absolutely. So just on that note, where, where do you see Sports Card Investor and the role you play two years, three years down the road, or even five years, if you think it's going to be a lot different than where you are now? That's a great question. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't say that I know the exact path of how everything's going to go in the next five years and exactly where we'll be. But what I do know right now is that as an organization, we've got two really, really strong strengths. One is our ability to create really high quality content that um, that showcases the hobby in a great way. Uh, and to do that across all the different social platforms, web, you know, YouTube, et cetera. And that's something that will forever be core to what we do. Um, and then the other thing is we built some really great products and, and, and those products, um, are, are associated, uh, largely with data and analytics as well. And I also see that being core to what we do, because I feel like, being able to, by having really great products at your fingertips, like our sports card investor app is, you know, that's our free product, right? Like I'm constantly, you know, talking about market movers, but our sports card investor app is our free app. It's, it's used by hundreds of thousands of people. Um, it's by far the most used app in the sports card hobby. And whenever I go to a card show, I, I always have people, you know, lots of people say to me like, oh, I love your app. I love your app. Most of the time they're talking about the sports card investor app. Sometimes they're talking about market movers, but most of the time they're using our free sports card investor app. And to be able to bring that type of technology to, you know, to, to people who are currently in the hobby, but also perhaps even more importantly, new people that are getting into the hobby to make it possible for them to learn about the different types of cards or type in their favorite player and see literally, you know, a couple thousand LeBron James cards or Michael Jordan cards or that type of thing in the app. And to be, to be able to uh, learn the different variations and what a prism hyper looks like compared to a, a prism pulsar or prism silver. And to be able to see all of that right at their fingertips. Like I, I feel like that has, 
that app, that technology has made the hobby more accessible for a lot of people. And so we want to continue to build great products that make the hobby experience better for everybody while also creating really great content that also makes the hobby experience better for everybody. Awesome. And I got to give you credit as well as other YouTubers and everyone out there with a platform or, or tool that is helping empower people to make better decisions because a, a big part of the hobby is gambling and the numbers at which people gamble now, you know, compared to five years ago, based on the price of cards is so high. And with, you know, gambling being an issue and there being regulations with gambling in pretty much every other sector and with the average American having X amount of credit card debt and all this, anything that empowers people to make smarter decisions, I'm a big fan of. So, uh, you know, your content was one of the first I saw back in early 2020, even before COVID. And then everything else, I've just learned so much. And the, all, with all the mistakes I've made, I've also avoided dozens, if not hundreds of other mistakes that uh, I could have made just if I didn't watch the videos, I didn't absorb the information. So uh, it's really cool that you're, you're leading with that. Dustin, why don't you say something? No, I think that we're, yeah, no, I know we we're going to wrap up. You guys are what you headed out for dinner here pretty soon or you, you've got plans. So let's wrap it up. I've got family here too, but, um, but no, I appreciate it, Jeff. It's awesome seeing you, man. I'll see you in a few weeks. Is the SCI booth going to be like a triple decker or are you guys just doing camera work and walking around? Do you, do you have a booth set up at the national this year? This year we have a booth. We did not have a booth last year. This year we have okay. a booth. It's going to be in the corporate section. It's a large, it's a large booth. It's not a fancy triple decker type, you know, eBay style <laughs> booth, uh, but it is a, it is a nice, uh, it's a nice corporate booth and it's going to be, half of it is going to be kind of a working production area where we're going to be doing videos and everything right from the booth. And we invite everybody to stop by and watch and watch us do some videos live and that kind of thing. Uh, and then the other half of the booth is we're going to be demoing the brand new version of market movers. Um, and just meeting and interacting with everybody who stops by. And I hate to break this uh, up, this this nice little goodbye, but I had to show this because I promised Tim from Slab Strong there is an auction going on. I think you know about it, Jeff. Yes. For this Pat Tillman downtown card with a beautiful uh, Slab Strong USA um, cover and protector. So I guess if you go to Slab Strong's Instagram, you could then – bid on it 100 percent of proceeds go to signatures for soldiers it's a beautiful card obviously pat tillman is an american hero and uh no reason not to to bid and and get an amazing card and do something good for the men and women who have served this country it is an awesome promotion and uh, i'm proud to be part of it uh you know uh supporting what tim's doing and supporting slap strong um it's awesome and by the way if you have not been on slap strong's website recently um it got a really nice revamp in fact let's go there live brad go to slabstrong.com yeah my bladder and, can wait uh, that's fine <laughs> this is uh it's a beautiful it's a beautiful website if i if i do say so myself my team at sports card investor uh designed the website got a pretty slick uh, little video there Go to the um, go to the shop page of uh, the website, and uh, beautiful shop page here. You can look at all of the different Slab Strong products available in a whole variety of colors and different pack sizes, all the way from singles up to fifty packs. Uh, this is a really cool product, and it's uh, all this is on SlabStrong.com. And by the way, if you use promo code SCI, you get ten percent off your order plus free shipping. Slabstrong.com promo code SCI. Look at that. An impromptu commercial for Slabstrong. <laughs> Fantastic. Well Wait, yeah, very nicely done. Seamlessly wrapped in. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get me a promo code. Anyway, guys, thanks so much. <laughs> I do have to use the restroom. Jeff, I'll see you in like 45 minutes or so. Yeah, you got it. Great seeing you as well. And everyone in the chat, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, please hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the show in any way. And I'll see you all next time.